Hello and welcome to the Greg Ferron podcast with your host Greg Ferron and today I have back the best chef in the world. Oh yeah, <laughs> Joe Collie Keys, who's gonna talk today about the barriers that are holding you ladies back from being your best self. Hey Joe. Hey, high praise indeed. I'm not sure about the best chef in the world, but I'll, you know, I'll take that. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to test that theory in the summer when I have a barbecue and you can come and cook some jerk chicken or something. I don't know. Then I'll. Then oh, I can yeah. With my J- Jamaican heritage, I should probably uh, I should probably have learned that by now from the in-laws, but I'm not sure. I'm a, I, I, I never try and go up against them. <laughs> <laughs> they would say well. not enough sugar. They would say not enough sugar. Not enough sugar. <laughs> Got to season it more, season it more, more seasoning. Yeah, more, yeah. Seasoning. more salt, more pepper, more, more hot, more spice. Yeah, more, more scotch <laughs> yeah. bonnet. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So this is like your third time, I think, on the show, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we've oh. had some great chats. We have indeed, and I think today was going to be another awesome one. So, just for people that are new to the podcast, just give us a quick rundown of who you are, what you do, and then we'll di- we'll dive in. Yeah, sure. So yeah, I'm Joe Keys, and um, I am a natural chef and healthy eating educator. Um, I came to this late in life after I'd had my three children and decided to retrain um, at the College of Naturopathic Medicine to become a natural chef. Um, And I, you know, although I call myself a chef, I am a chef, but I don't chef in uh, in sort of restaurants and things like that. Um, I create recipes um, and uh, spend a lot of my time uh, educating other people. That's where my passion is, educating other people in how to cook simple meals for better health generally. Um, And I do that through uh, workshops, one off workshops, um, which I run with another chef I, I trained with. Um, And we take a dive into sort of the nutritional science behind that because I've continued to educate myself on this kind of the nutritional science side of things, as well as kind of cooking and creating recipes and things. Um, So I know the nutrients that need to go in to help people in in, with different uh, certain conditions and things like that. But also another part is, um, you know, really educating and supporting women particularly women but not uh, but not uh, exclusively um, on how to you know get on their health journey they you know especially sort of starting perimenopause um, people tend to kind of find things aren't working the same way that they used to if you know they found a way in the past that's worked for them maybe that's not working anymore and they can't understand why um, and just really supporting them given the accountability and tips and uh help along the way to and bringing people together as well I think being part of a community that are trying to do the same thing and are going through similar things to you is really important as well um, and really helps them so kind of that's that's where I'm at at the moment um, and always developing and, and looking at new ways to just share my passion really for healthy eating and and how easy it can be it doesn't have to be complicated and um, you can keep it simple and, and get it to work for you really. Awesome. Great intro. So, and obviously we'll share how people can find you and oh, great. You know, hunt you down after this because you do some awesome stuff on Instagram and you've got an awesome Facebook group. So let's dive in, right? And yeah, you mentioned yeah. something there, which I think is going to resonate with a lot of people. Like women will find around perimenopause that things don't seem to work how they used to. And is that a barrier for change to women? Yeah, I I think it is. Um, And and a a barrier to change, not because things aren't working and and they can't change the way they are, but I think um, it's a barrier because it makes them stuck, which is, you know, what we were talking about, because they feel that they don't know their bodies anymore. They don't know what to do. Um, and you, you know, you, we're all creatures of habit and we, and we re- resort to what we've known to work in the past. And when that doesn't work, we, we don't know where to go. Um, and we get confused and we get despondent. Um, and what a lot of women do, um, is then start investigating going okay well that's not working why is that not working what can I do and they're on social media they're googling they're you know seeing the media um and and stuff like that and then they start to kind of look in to finding the next shiny thing that um that might you know it's gonna this is gonna be the magic pill which I think we've talked about before um that's gonna solve all my problems um and this is where you know 
you know, I've kind of co co coined a little, um, oh gosh, what do they call them? What's the grammar? Joey, Joeyism. Joeyism. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> acronism or something, isn't it? Where, um, so the first, you, you know, the, it, it all becomes a load of crap, if you don't mind me using that word. But I mean, the C of that is confusion. Um, and people go out and they listen to their neighbor, they see their neighbor or dawn down the street being able to lose three stone in three months. Uh, and I want to do that. And why is that not working for me? I must do what she does. Or, you know, they say that um, I shouldn't, I should only eat, you know, drink celery juice every morning and, and you know, fast for 20 out of the 24 hours a day or, you know, whatever it might be. That there, There's so much information out there. I think it just becomes confusing and paralyzing. And we, you know, I, I've known a, know a lot of clients who've tried lots and lots and lots of different things over the last couple of years, um, but they've never stuck with one thing either. So uh, this, isn't, this isn't working within the first two weeks. I haven't dropped a stone in three weeks. So th this can't be working for me um, or, you know, I'm not waking up and jumping out of bed with all the energy that they promised me I would um, because I'm now eating, I don't know, whatever it might be that they've told you to do to rebalance your hormones it or kickstart your awesome. metabolism. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so I think that is the first thing is, is confusion. Um, and I, I mean, you must get this a lot as well with your clients, do you not? Oh, it's, the, it's, a, it's a constant thing of, of educating people that you you didn't get where you are now in two weeks no so to undo it and unpick the habits the mindset you've got the biology you currently got is going to take time yeah and and I think you, you you touch on something there you know is it's the biology of it and we can't appreciate and I don't think any of us appreciate enough how different we all are um, and what works for someone in perimenopause might not work for the next person in perimenopause you know um, and, and uh, personally I think a lot of this comes down to um, your gut flora your gut microbiome everybody's is so different and so that means that you react your body reacts in very different ways to very different stimuluses um, and we can only know that ourselves as to whether it's working or not. And we need to learn to trust ourselves um, and listen to our bodies so that we can change that confusion into knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think uh, teaching people to educate themselves without overwhelm and by, you know, for me, it's it's focusing on if you want to go and Google and do research, I'm all for that because I think educating yourself um, is really important and it takes away that confusion. Um, but you need to just stick to a couple of very well established people who talk sense, um, you know, who are who are science based, who are qualified um, and can give you sensible advice. Um, so that's one thing. And, and the second part of the knowledge is, is learning to listen to your body. As I've just said, you know, if you aren't waking up feeling great in the morning because you're waking up with a headache or you're waking up feeling still exhausted, there is something going on. Your body is trying to tell you something that's not working correctly. And it's trying to work through those. And you may need help with this, um, you know, from, from qualified people um, to, to work through and kind of peel back the layers of what's going on um, so that you, you know, I mean, for me, something like that would probably be the fact that you're not detoxifying properly. Um, and if you're not sleeping properly, that's when we do a lot of detoxifying. And so it would be looking at that, that kind of pathway through your body. And, you know, one of the things that you can do for that is to increase your cruciferous vegetables, things like broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage. They really help with the detoxifying process and lemon, um, you know, lemon and uh, ginger and those kind of spices and things that you could drink in a tea or something they're really helpful as well so it's it's just educating yourself but turn you know if you are feeling confused and trying all these different things is just to stop take a step back keep it simple 
and educate yourself and turn that confusion into knowledge really that's on a really good point because when i work with clients i try to make things really simple Mm. like I'm not throwing a lot of things at, at you at once I'm like we're going to do one or two things this week and we're going to nail them and that might last three weeks yeah until we nail that habit is there a thing that I think women often don't trust themselves so they feel like they have to do a million things because that's what they do in their home life that's what they do at work so they yeah. have to treat themselves as I have to do everything yeah want to try everything because they want to get those results and I think you you know that's that's a really good point is that I think as women um you know especially in, in at this kind of age you know 40 to 60 you know it's, it's kind of that sandwich generation where we're multitasking in so many areas um you know if we have children they're growing up but they still need to be looked after but also maybe you've got aging uh, parents who also then you know you're turning from the from, from the child to the parent to to look after them as well um and you know they become a little bit more dependent on you um and you know let alone trying to manage your own life if you work as well um it, it, there, we do do so much um, and that plays into it, um, you know, because then we get into the kind of the next thing, which is responsibility and awareness, you know, um, do we have time to prioritize ourselves, you know, do we give ourselves enough credit that we deserve to to give ourselves a bit of time. Um, and if we do give ourselves that bit of time, actually, we end up being able to give other people more time. Um, and, and I think it takes us a long time to, to appreciate that, that if we slow down and don't stress about every little thing that we used to be able to stress about when we were a bit younger, because we probably didn't have quite so many things to stress about, um, you know, let the small things go a little bit, especially when it comes to the children um, and give that time to yourself. Yep. And one of those things that you could use that time for, not only to just relax and, and be with yourself, but is to use that time to prioritize your health giving yourself that time is one of those things, but then you can also start to utilize that time to, to prepare food or make a plan for your exercise and, and, and get organized for yourself. And it, it then becomes a, you know, a perpetual circle of, of better habits, yeah. better routines, um, you know, and, and then it's so, you know, the A of the crap is awareness, or most of us have a lack of it. And until we become aware of exactly what we're actually doing and stop, you, you know, that takes time to stop. You have to stop and go, okay, so how am I actually spending my time? Um, I mean, I, I really don't spend much time on my phone. I really don't spend much time watching the telly or talking on the phone or, just yep. popping into the shops or you know it's not true of everybody but if you do sit and analyze your time properly you will find that you can find half an hour for yourself each day that you do something different than you're currently doing with it so time is one thing mm -hmm. um because if i was given a pound for every time i'm told oh but i don't have time to do a meal plan i don't have time to prepare meals I need something I can just grab and go. Can you not make it for me? Um, I would be a millionaire. Um, but, you know, it is taking that time for yourself and becoming aware of what you're doing. So time is one of the things that you need to become aware of. And then sort of bringing an awareness to your habits. So they may be, so when are you snacking? What are you snacking on? Why are you snacking? Are you hungry? Is it just a habit? You know, and the same is for, it goes with alcohol, you know, when are you drinking? Why are you drinking? You know, really delving in and asking your questions. Um, sleep is another major one. You know, if you, do you have a sleep routine? What time are you going to bed? Why are you not going to bed till midnight? Are you getting up? Why are you feeling rubbish when you get up? Am I getting, you know, six, seven, eight hours decent sleep? Bringing some awareness to these things um, is, is one of the key 
ways to then be able, you can't change anything until you know what you're doing. Um, and it's just about building that picture, getting all the puzzle pieces up the right way effectively. So that's what the awareness is, is, you know, you start with your puzzle and all the bits are upside down and back to front. And we're, we're, we're just, we're bringing our awareness that we can see the pieces of the puzzle. And it's not until then that we can start to put them together and build a better routine um, and make some changes to some of those habits slowly, one at a time, like you say, one thing at a time, nail that, then move on. Um, you know, and so, so that awareness is, is really key before the changes can happen, um, especially if you want them to become long-term habits, you know, to be able to change. Um, I mean, with, with your guys in, you know, if when it comes to uh, uh, fitness, you know, are they aware of what they do? You know, the time-wise, I bet you hear, oh, well, I haven't got time. Oh, I, I blow that apart. I'm very good at that. That's one of my favorite ones. So if I've got a client who always talks about time, I'll often ask the question and say, can you get your phone for a minute? And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go to your settings and just go yeah. to your screen time. What does it say? Oh. And what's the what's the most used app? Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. Okay, great. So if we aim to reduce that by 20% this week, do you think that would free you up to be able to do X? And I think what becomes apparent is that it's not time, it's prioritizing self. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and that comes down to the R of crap, which for me is responsibility or lack of responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, you know, like you say, prioritizing self, that takes responsibility, that takes me taking responsibility for my health my journey and the choices that I make and until you can take on that responsibility for your own health journey uh, be that to to heal yourself from whatever problems that you have or to lose weight um, and understanding why you're doing that as well you know take responsibility for the reason that you're doing this not and and, and I will never accept but I'll be happy when I've lost three stone. That that is not that's not that's not a reason. Uh, if you're not happy now, you're not going to be happy when you get three stone lighter. I I've seen it before. It's it's not so. You know that's another area that you have to work on and take responsibility for. Is really delving into why you want to do it because that's what's going to motivate you to prioritize it um, and and move forward. Um, you can't you can't use other people as an excuse all the time but my husband wanted to take me out for dinner but the kids wanted pizza for tea you know but I had to do x y and z so I couldn't get to bed before midnight you know it's the choices that you make are will always be your responsibility um, and you can blow all those excuses out of the water if you prioritize yourself and your health it's always um interesting when i ask the question okay cool so the state that you feel like you're in you know you're unhealthy you feel lethargic you don't feel sexy you don't feel like you can wear the clothes you're not putting yourself for promotions at work and you felt however bad you feel because i've had i regularly have ladies cry when they talk to me oh yeah they cry all the time i'm like okay right now, what I want you to do is go and tell your family exactly what you told me about how you're feeling mm. and then say to them, I need more help in the house. And that's really scary for a lot of, for a lot of women, I think, because it feels like they're failing. Um, but that's not the case at all. Like my mum would, I had my list of chores that I had to do from about five years old. Like, and I couldn't sit down and watch TV until they were done and to the right standard. Yeah. But I feel like we've got into this thing where a lot of women will take every responsibility on and they don't need to. And I think you're missing an opportunity then to teach your kids how to do things for later life. You're absolutely right. You know, and, and I hold my hands up. I am probably one of the worst at this. And, and I know how I've got myself into the situation. 
Um, so what I was saying earlier on, um, you know, about don't sweat the small stuff with the kids, you know, that is great. But what for me it's turned into a, a bit um, is that I tell you what, I'll just do it myself because I don't want the row, you know, and, and it's it's really hard if you haven't had it instilled in you, you know, at a very young age that this is what is expected of you. You know, when you get to the point when they're kind of mid-teens and you think, well, actually, it's about time you could pack your own school bag and uh, load and unload the dishwasher or at least get your washing off the floor into the washing bin, uh, if not actually do a wash. Um, you know, or I better do it myself because the, if they do the washing, you know, uh, they won't do it right. You know, and it is and it is a difficult one for women. I, I and, and I hold my hands up. I'm I'm you know guilty of that. But it is taking that responsibility to know that if you can get them to do that um, or get help and, and it, or even just get the support of I'm on this journey because I feel like this. I mean, going home and telling your family that that's how you feel in the first place is really, really hard, really hard. Because, you know, similarly, I regularly have clients in, um, in tears because it is emotional for them. Mm. But they don't want to show that emotion necessarily at home because that's, that's not a strong mummy. That's, that's mummy, uh, mummy crying. Why is mummy crying? You know? And we don't want them to to feel that way, but it is important for them to see that. Yeah, because they it, have those emotions as well. Exactly. And how are they going to grow up and be emotionally available? So we preach on LinkedIn about being socially emotion, emotional, and all this stuff, but then we hide everything ourselves. It doesn't even yeah. make sense. Yeah. Do you know what I was at? A, I was at a church meeting the other day, a prayer meeting the other day, and we were talking about. Sorry, we're going properly off. No, no, no. Go deep. Let's go. We were talking about freedom. Mm -hmm. and when are you truly free um and it was really interesting we dealt dived into it and and most of us came to it was purely women um it, we came to the conclusion that the only time we feel really free to be ourselves is when we are with friends that we have known since we were younger at school mm -hmm. and that's because you know even with your family and your husbands your sisters well I thought I was free with my sister but I'll come to that in a minute um but it we're playing a role in every other part of our life except for when we were growing up and we were with our school friends they've no, they know us truly properly and we can be completely ourselves with them whereas with your partner you're a husband or a wife you know you're a wife um with your children you're a mother with your siblings, you are you are the sister or the brother, and yeah. And it was I was away with my sister and my sister in law the other week, and you know we got into you know emotional stuff, and they were. But I've never seen you cry, and I'm like, oh, I am like the most emotional person ever. Most people would think, um, but it's because I was probably unbeknown to me playing the 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 older sister role. Mm. Um, you know, and it's so it's things like that. You know, so when we go back into our homes. You know, with you, they're being free because, and with me, because we they can just be open because we have no judgment on them. We don't, we're not expecting them to play a role. Yeah, and that's um, cool, them, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's just an interesting phenomenon that, you know, we, even when we think we are open and free and we've got the most loving family in the world, we're still playing this role potentially, which does hold us back from, from being as open as we maybe should be. Just on the roles thing, because I think this is a really big thing, and I see a lot of this on social media. Like men, especially in the house, don't do stuff. So I think I'm going to give a quick little way to clear this up. Men are very good at going, we've worked a whole day, so I don't want to come home and do more stuff. That is man's logic. We're like, we work hard to be able to go and play football, watch football, or whatever we like to do. But at home, we just want to go, oh. Yeah. Often, men will take, I've, and I've seen it and I've done it myself, we'll tell our partner, why are you cleaning? Like, the dishes can we wait till tomorrow. Let's sit down and cuddle, watch whatever, whatever watch whatever. But oftentimes, the woman's like, no, no, I've got to make sure this is done. Like, I, I can't have plates in the sink overnight. And I'm like, the queen is not coming to judge your house right now. But these are self-imposed standards that I think they yeah. would have seen 
from parents who were the generation before where often mum was at home and had time to do all of this stuff. Yeah. Now, most women are working. Yeah. So if you come home, have dinner, and you want to chill, chill out. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that don't sweat the small stuff you know mm. it does it really matter um but but we you know like you say these inbuilt um habits and you know learned behaviors are are so ingrained you mm. know even down to things like um you know the clean plate brigade I, I again class myself as one of those you know i come across this a lot but you can't waste food uh so a lot of my clients said well the answer is at the moment is I eat it you know even the kids stuff that you know if they're leaving half a breast of chicken I better eat it you know it could be worse than a breast of chicken but you know it's more likely to be there but but that's the thing is that we've learned all these different behaviors um and and a lot of the time it's unraveling those which which comes to this kind of this the second part of um of of awareness is experience and that is experience of yourself that's becoming your own expert really analyze all these little things um mm. uh, and taking time out to, to really ask yourself some of these questions so why am i eating the children's food after i've eaten my own dinner you know why am i stressing about the dishes in the sink you know are the, what is going to happen if i don't do that nothing yeah no i think that's where the that difference between men and women are men and we're quite struck we're quite like in this box this is the work box this is the home box whatever but i know women have a different way of thinking yeah. um but yeah ladies you can chill out yeah yeah chill out like, and, and you know and once you take on so responsibility the r the responsibility once you take on that responsibility it becomes empowerment mm. so you know responsibility becomes empowerment and once you've empowered yourself the repercussions of that are, are tenfold yeah. you know and, and you will see that within your family as well you know if you trust them i've seen this with my son if you actually can be strong and trust them to pack their school bag and get out the door without you nagging them and checking at uh, yeah every you know you're handing the responsibility to them they become empowered to actually oh mum's trusting me to do that so then they actually do it because if you they, they don't do it they're going to get in trouble at school at the end of the day and once you stop doing it for them they take on that responsibility that then frees you up and gives you more time and is empowering to you so it's that take that responsibility on empower yourself and other people in your family if that's what's needed um to to be able to move you forward and to put, put you in a better frame of mind and mindset really great illustration of this i was watching a wildlife program the other day and this female cheetah she had three cubs and obviously she would do all the hunting at first but then eventually what she would do is she'd catch something and then let them hunt with it okay yeah and half the time they'd mess it up. They would mess it up. After a while, guess what happened? They got it. One night, she disappeared into the wilderness to obviously have more babies. They had to go and fend for themselves. Yeah. But they knew how to go and hunt. Yeah. They were perfect at it. And that's the, I think that's what we need to do to help the next generation learn stuff. Yeah. We have to come adults. They've got to learn. You know, and, and how important is that when it comes to health? You know, the example that we set to them now is is just, you know, is massive. You know, it, it's it can be small things like, you know, if, if they're still young, the way that you wean them onto what foods you wean them onto, you know, and then the, the habits that we ex show to them as adults um, and giving them the responsibility to cook in the kitchen and teach them, you know, even if to start with, they want to cook rubbish that they've seen on TikTok and you're thinking, oh, I don't want them cooking that. That's really not good for them. That's not what we're talking about here. Yes, it is. It's getting them in the kitchen. That is step one. It doesn't matter what they're cooking. Get them in the kitchen. Give them the responsibility to, to do something in the kitchen, you know, and then 
they will develop that you know if you're teaching them about what is the more healthy options then they will when it becomes a priority to them we could be talking about it all the time it does sink in even if they are down the shops buying all the rubbish which they all do you know even if they've you've brought them up eating really healthily they will break out at some point and they will go to experiment and do what they want and we have to let them do that because that's another game you know again a thing of responsibility they have to learn by their own mistakes um but but you know if we can educate them now hopefully they will take that forward they will break away from it but they will come back to it because that knowledge and that experience um will have and the skills that they've gained will have sunk in and and they will come back to it much easier than than the people who have never had that education or that exposure or that experience you know i'm hoping that my kids will class themselves pretty lucky that they've got a gym in the garden a, a dad is a, a an in, instructor a mum is a healthy chef and yes they all want to eat rubbish most of the time but I know that I'm getting in as much healthy stuff as I can now. And I know that they, they've learned it and it is in there somewhere. <laughs> that leads me nicely onto a perfect point where you mentioned your gym. So I think access to exercise mm. is potentially a barrier. Often yeah. when you say, I feel embarrassed at the gym. I don't belong in the gym, all that kind of stuff. So is that something that you might have heard or even your husband might have heard yeah, yeah, very, very much so, um, especially with the ladies that I work with, because they've not been brought up um, uh, necessarily in a gym environment. You know, they may have done sports at school, but as soon as they, you know, this is a classic story. They've done sports and been really sporty at school. Um, and then when they've left school, you know, they've, they've not done it. It's just, you know, they're not part of that school team anymore. So and then they don't know what to do because going to the gym then sort of you know 20 years ago wasn't really accessible to everybody um, and it wasn't so much the done thing as it certainly is now um for for, for women of, of this age anyway and um and so introducing them back into it is quite difficult uh so generally what i find is they'll be happy to go for walks so getting out walking i uh, thoroughly recommend that to everybody no, nobody there are well, unless you've got joint issues and things like that, you know, that can't just take themselves out for a walk. There are very little barriers to that. Um, and things that are a little bit more um, class based, certainly. Um, so and, and more gentle, like Pilates and yoga to start them off. And then it's kind of trying to introduce some element of strength training as well. So those are the three things that I try to introduce eventually. But what happens is once they start on the journey for sort of three, four, six, eight weeks, they start to feel better. Their body starts to feel a bit better. They feel better in their skin and then they feel more confident to be able to go and do something at the gym more. So if they've joined a gym to do a Pilates class, um, they then may go, OK, well, maybe I'll try the circuits class or the something else class once they feel a little bit more confident in themselves. So it's it's again comes on to the P of crap which is um perseverance really um or well patience really first of all it's lack of patience you know that being the barriers that they want results all the time but the next is is patience having patience and persevering and trying to stick with it these things do not develop overnight habits do not change overnight um your health does not change overnight um I, I know a lot of people look at me and go, oh, well, it's easy for you. You know, look, it's fine. I've had a 10 year journey of being yo-yo dieting and a 10 year journey back off that to get to health. You know, I, I've been there. I do understand how difficult it can be. I hated exercise. I never did any exercise at school. Um, used to avoid it like the plague. Um, I was a big girl as a teenager. And it wasn't until my early 20s, as you know, when I moved to London, that I still kind of went, oh, everybody does exercise and is kind of healthy. Oh, dear, I better get on the bandwagon. Mm. But then it was just all, all about, um, you know, weight loss. I needed to, to look thinner and slimmer. And, and then I met my husband, who was obviously very much into exercise and a wedding. And that was the motivation at the time. 
but it was still all this yo-yo dieting for a reason, for an event, or um, it was never really about health until after after the children had come along, really. So it's been a very long journey. What that tells me is you've had a identity shift. Because yeah. on the on this side, you've got the what you've said, yo-yo diet, on and off diets, only diet for extreme purposes when there's a wedding, holiday, birthday, social gathering, reunion, all that stuff, to no, this is how Joe lives. Yeah. And that's the big fundamental shift, I think. Yeah, that massive. I, people have to make. Mm. The diet doesn't matter, the training plan doesn't matter until we start to install that mindset. Yeah, and for me, there was that there was that light bulb moment. And I think everybody does have one, but you don't necessarily see it at the time. But I can very much mark in my diary almost uh, that light bulb moment, which was when uh, my second daughter had digestive issues. Uh, well, all of my children had digestive issues, but I think you, I've probably told you this story yeah, before. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, my middle daughter, she was really, really quite poorly, you know, sort of preschool age and just into the first year of her school. Um, and I took her to a nutritional therapist to try and sort this out. And um, we started to look at the diet and um, I thought we were pretty healthy, but there was still a lot of processed foods. There was still a lot of gluten in there. Anyway, so we cleaned up the diet and literally within less than three months, she was off to all medication and she was absolutely fine. And it was that light bulb moment where I went, oh, what I put in my mouth actually affects my body, <laughs> which is, you know, it's, it's silly when you say it like that, but and until there is a reason sometimes and and often I see that with clients you know it's not until they get to what bottom that they go oh dear I really need to do something about this now it's going to be very controversial go on it's not me it's my hormones oh <laughs> yes well yes be controversial uh I would agree that being a woman in that situation I would agree that my hormones definitely have an impact Mm -hmm. um but they're not an excuse that you can use to hide away and uh not address that yeah um, I think why I, I just wanted to see how your reaction was to because obviously that's how can I explain it I think we know hormones are important right I totally that like I understand it I've studied it I, I geek out on this stuff but it can often be used as a defense against actually doing stuff that will actually yeah. and, and, and that comes back to the r again and that's responsibility mm. you can't you you can't use your hormones as an excuse to not take action it is your hormones are changing in your body without a shadow of a doubt um and those changes will impact the way that your body works and processes all, all sorts of processes within the body um and you know what i try to say to my ladies in that situation is we're going to look at what you put in your body first um because we want to be making sure that the your other hormones because all the hormones impact each other um and starting with looking at a low glycemic diet where we're reducing um the simple sugars and the carbohydrates we have we want them to be coming from um you know brown rice brown uh versions or you know whole grain versions reducing that actual quantity size um having more colorful vegetables so we're reducing um you know the so we're kind of anti-inflammatory and antioxidants high in our diet but the really balancing those those um blood sugars because they will influence our insulin levels and then in in turn our adrenals and uh you know the um your cortisol and then you know all of these hormones are interconnected um and you know that is also going to impact you know, our estrogen and testosterone and it's 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 yeah. it gets very complicated but what we don't want people to do is get bogged down in that detail it is addressing what you are doing and keeping it simple which for most women is to first of all to start looking at those sugars um, and keeping those sugars and uh, you're balancing your hormones, um, balancing your blood sugars to balance the hormones generally. Mm. Alcohol has a massive impact. I think a lot of women will agree that alcohol and the way that we process that, once the hormones start getting a bit 
we're iffy. It, it changes. It's it's quite strange, but I know a lot of women um, who, who have found that. Uh, and again, that's to do with the sugars as much as anything and the sulfates in that, uh, in wine particularly. Um, and so reducing alcohol is another an, another big one because then that also impacts our sleep. And as I said earlier, you know, we detoxify a lot when we're sleeping and, you know, our hormones need to detoxify as well. So, you know, there's, it, it is all interconnected, but we can't use our hormones as an excuse not to take action. I think that is the key. And that, and obviously, because I know, you know, a little while ago, you said, Greg, I need some help with, I'm going to shift a bit of body fat. Mm. And it was, you know, interesting, because you didn't mention your hormones. I mean, obviously, I know you and I, and I understood where yeah. you were coming from. But as soon as you made those tweaks, magic happened. Yeah. Do you want the next part of that story? Okay, go on then. <laughs> I haven't heard for a while, so, you know. No, not? so the next part of that story um, goes into, um, yeah, so I did, the magic did start to happen. Um, but I still knew that something wasn't right because my digestion was not not optimum by any stretch of the imagination. I was suffering from bloating more than anything, and that was bothering me. And I've been ignoring it probably for quite a long time, but I, I couldn't ignore it any longer. I had dropped a little bit of weight, but not as much as I or in the way that I particularly wanted to. Um, anyway, cut a very long story short, I then went to um a gut specialist nutrition or therapist um, because I knew I wanted to do some stool samples. Um, so I had all those done to find out what was going on. And interestingly, it, it, it brought up a couple of things. One that my gut flora for someone who has an amazing diet was not by any stretches the imagination optimal. Um, and secondly, that my uh, digestive enzymes weren't firing properly and so I wasn't processing my fats properly which also meant that my vitamin d which I knew was low and I'd been supplementing and I couldn't get it above 74 and I wanted it over 100 um it so which also proved that my fats weren't being um being processed properly so uh with a little bit of tweaking here and there some probiotic supplements and some digestive enzyme supplements and um trying to increase my um hydrochloric acid uh in my stomach acid um has helped me rebalance my digestive juices if you want to put it like that so now i'm actually processing everything properly and i've dropped half a stone like that awesome probably a little bit too much <laughs> So this is a this is brilliant because um, I, I had a client with a similar issue, and we would what we did we had to actually test her blood sugars off of certain meals. Okay. Then we could see the, but I think that's the problem is that we'll try one thing for a lot of ladies. We'll try one thing, but they won't look deeper, yeah. and won't invest to go deeper. And that's yeah. the real big thing that comes up for me all the time is that. Mm -hmm. When you do, when you have situations like that, and you're really working, you're coaching closely. If someone can go deep and go to that deeper level, you might have to invest in it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and it is peeling back those onion layers. Um, so you know, when women are doing all the right things, and as you put it, the magic isn't happening, or you can see that there's still something that's not quite right. Because what we're trying to do, and, and or certainly what I try to do um, with, for, for most of my ladies, is, is try to find balance within their body again. You know, there are, there are seven different kind of processes. Um, it, it, this is kind of going into functional medicine a little bit. Seven kind of processes, assimilation and elimination, detoxification, um, cellular transport this is how we transport nutrients around the body cellular communications this is how we uh, communicate through our body you know this being the hormones and neurotransmitters and things defense which is our immune system and uh, structure which is our bones and joints and things um, and if there is anything out of balance in any of those areas it has a knock-on effect on everything else so what we're trying to do is bring balance to that so giving your body nourishing your body with all the right nutrients macros and micronutrients once we know that we're doing that but something is still not right then it's like peeling back the layers so which of these processes is not mm. is not firing properly 
Um, and then, you know, you can hone in that. And this is when you get to that deeper dive, which, yes, you do generally need to invest in to, to do some testing to find out where those are, because you can't guess, you know, even with vitamin D, you know, I could have been supplementing forever going, well, it's fine. My vitamin D is fine because I'm supplementing. I'm heavily supplementing. I was, but it made no difference. But if I hadn't been testing, I wouldn't have known that. However, now I've got the, I know that my fats are being uh, uh, digested properly. Um, and so that should mean that I'm absorbing the vitamin D properly. Then I tested again and it shot up to 178. So if I hadn't have tested, I'd have probably kept on supplementing and actually then that becomes toxic. So it's, you do, you do need to, when you're getting to that level of detail. Um, but the first thing, before you know everybody gets into the confusion bit again um it's the knowledge of listening to your body and starting with the basics and the basics is nourishing your body with as many nutrients as you possibly can keeping it uh hydrated moving sleeping stress management and then i'd add protein lift heavy things and yeah now <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And that's the stress management. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. When people say to me, so what should I eat? Well, focus on the way that you build your plate. Don't put the carbohydrates on the plate first. They are the last thing you put on the plate. The first thing you put on your plate is your protein source. The next thing you put on, well, actually, no, it's not. I, I, I go the other way. Um, vegetables first, non-starchy vegetables first. They're, they're kind of the base of the plate. You cover the plate in that. Then you put your protein on top of that. And then you might have a small amount of space for your for your carbohydrates. It's always interesting that when people go, I'm doing low carb and I'm like, I'm sitting there watching them eat broccoli and apples and stuff. I'm like, going low carb, are we? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like vegetables are carbohydrates, right? Yeah. And yeah, they are. And, and that's where most people should get their um, get their carbohydrates from. Um, but if they feel that they need and they can't get away from those, you know, those whole those you know, rice or potatoes or whatever, but just make sure that they are, they are the condiment on the side, as opposed to the, because we have, we've been taught the first thing you put on your plate is your mashed potato or your rice, isn't it? You know, that's what goes on first. And because the place is empty, that, that ends up being the biggest portion. So. I think that's because those foods, especially when people have struggled in life and all the rest of it are cheap and easy, right? Yep. Easy to make big old big old bag of rice and mum used to go to Halston and buy a big old bag of rice and whatever and that she'd layer it on and I'd be like yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean for, you know with your cultural background I mean that is the staple diet isn't it rice potato yam yeah sweet potato yeah that's pretty much it plantain that, oh that don't even go there <laughs> You are now oh, off my pod. You are now off my podcast. Go. <laughs> Go. I'm winding you up. I've been watching. Your, I've been watching your socials. <laughs> I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. But yeah, planting for those who listen. Yeah, those winding me. But yeah, that it the 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 diet is very is very starchy and yeah, the ladies who listen, especially of Indian West Indian, like those groups have the highest rate of obesity and diabetes in the UK. Yeah, that should work because we're one of the smaller people. So. The smaller group amounts of people so but those are very high starch diets. you know it's yeah. just everything's based around carbs like a, just a plate full of carbs yeah yeah and and that's that that's must be difficult you know for your client base who are who are of that uh cultural background to you know so, so you know it, it it's not learned behavior it's it's their culture so mm -hmm. you know changing that kind of dietary habit must be quite tricky Often, when I get the emotion out of them, mm -hmm. they'll say, look, what's the dream here? What's the real dream? Tell me what the, what's the dream of how you want to look, feel, how you want to live life. Great. So you're, you're, this is what you want. This is how you're feeling. If we do the opposite of what you're doing now, then you'll get the dream. Are you ready to live the dream? Yeah. And that's a, I think that's a, the big problem. I think a lot of people don't have a dream. They just exist. Yeah yeah um and yeah, most people with a big dream will, will do anything for it right if you've got a big goal a big dream and how you will live and be you'll do everything for it but if you don't have the environment to 
nurture that dream, that dream, talk about it, understand it. You just exist. Oh, I'll be all right. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, you can imagine that kind of conversation about, you know, m- my dream is to, to be like this and to get there, I've got to give up the way that my culture eats. Um, that, that, that's, that's, that's a massive, massive shift. Um, and, and to get the support, you know, like we were saying earlier on about the support and the, the openness at home uh, to, to make that easier um, must be quite hard. Must be quite hard. I think that's where you have to layer it and say, okay, well, yeah. maybe you're not going to have half a plate of starchy carbs. No. Let's just make it a quarter and we're going to have some boiled veg. Yeah. Oh, cool. I can do that. Yeah. So then yeah. you can still have and you can still eat with others, not feel like the pariah, which I yeah, think is exactly. a problem for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to feel out of the club, like the girls that go drinking on a Friday night. I don't want to, I don't want to feel out of the club of the, you know, the girls no, going. And, and, it, and it's finding that, you, you, like you say, the ways to fit in with that, you know, you know, with the alcohol, it's, it's having something different in that glass but having the same glass, it's, you know, silly things like that. You know, you can go out and drink bubbles with the girls. They may be drinking Prosecco, but maybe every other glass you have is fizzy water or a tonic, you know, just, and then at least you're halving the amount that you would drink. But then it's the question of, oh, but Joe, you're being boring. You're, you're so healthy all the time. Yeah, I've heard that. But I, I'm, you know, then that's taking the responsibility again um, and knowing your why and making a good choice for yourself. And actually, quite a lot of those people that you're sat with are going, oh, I'd quite like to do what she's doing. But uh, and then eventually, if you can be the strong one, you're going to turn all of that group around because most of them will actually want what you're doing, but don't want to make the effort or don't want to be the pariah, as it were. Um, But if you can find a buddy in that group who would wants to do the same, come and let's do it together. And then we come back to this community of people, which is so important of the people that you have around you. Um, even if it isn't your family, you know, I try to put ladies together who are in similar, uh, have similar journeys or similar stories. Um, and, and we, you know, the groups I'm running at the moment, they, they each have an individual WhatsApp group um, and, and they are sharing multiple times daily um about what's going on for them and and we're not just talking about what they're eating what they're drinking and how they're exercising but you know it ends up being you know a proper support group of what's going on with their families and you know how they why can't they fit this in and you know and and sharing those things encourages other people yeah as always right we've just done an hour (laughs) have we (laughs) Hey, look, and as always, I've got my notes. I haven't looked at them once. Impressed. <laughs> yeah, here's my notes. What, 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 what was on your notes? I'm curious. Uh, actually, it was the, uh, it was a, it's a printout of a blog I'm, I've written about, um, yeah, a sim- on the subject. So it's uh, what keeps women stuck when it comes to health and weight loss? How to turn the crap to keep. So the crap was confusion, lack of responsibility, lack of awareness, lack of patience. And what we want to turn that into is keep, which is knowledge, empowerment, experience, and perseverance. Ooh. So to read that, you can see it in my, um, well, it's on my website now, but it'll be going out in my newsletter tomorrow, along with maybe a link to this podcast. Okay, cool. So, well, okay, I better do some work and get this one out and ready. Yeah, yeah, speed it up. Oh, I'm going on holiday on Saturday. <laughs> okay, cool. I'll get it out for you. And then you, if I'll take that link of yours and I'll put it in the notes for anyone. Oh, cool. That'd be awesome. So, Joe, I think let's finish up because I know that if we start talking, we're going to be another half hour. Yeah, we better. Yeah, let's do another time. Let's, let's do that. So, it's been awesome to have you on again. Thank you. Just tell yeah. the ladies where they can find you, where's the best places to, to hunt you down and see yeah. you. Yeah. So, um, best places to hunt me down are Instagram um, at Time to Nourish. Um, I have a website which is uh, time to nourish, uh, .co.uk, um and Facebook page and I have a Facebook group which is um, pretty thriving uh, called the Time to Nourish Tribe so do come along and join that at the moment we're talking about healthy alternatives to Easter treats and Easter food um, generally. Uh, so that's what's going on this week in there um and yeah so i've got my next workshop coming out my last of my workshops my uh, sort of one-off workshops um as part of the nutrition the mind body connection series it is called eating for life 
and we take a deep dive into some of the bits I was touching on earlier about the seven different processes um, within the body um, and how we can eat to uh, balance those um, and work out if there's anything that's not going on right. So yeah, come, come and find me. Stuff. I love that. Stuff. Awesome. All right. So if you're listening to this, go hunt Joe down. She's awesome. Um, share this podcast with someone who can, it might help. I think this will help a lot of ladies who can take some action and inspiration from it. And hopefully I'll drag Joe on again. Yes. So I, think, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to talk about. We'll just, Joe will do her notes. <laughs> and then we'll talk about something else. And then we'll just go <laughs> somewhere else, which is awesome. So Joe, thank um, you very much. Have an awesome day. And Brilliant. Thanks ever so much for having me on, Greg. Lovely to chat as always. Every time. And I'll All speak right. to you soon. Take, take care. care. Bye. Bye.